everyone and welcome back to the NFA Review Channel. Today we're going to be reviewing the Rex Selenium MG22 Extreme Duty 22 Suppressor. So Rex Selenium is back on the channel. I have to say as of right now I'm pretty sure it is the most requested promo code on my Patreon page for my gold members. So I believe Rex Selenium does 20% off factory direct sales which is pretty legit. Really nice of them to do. They don't have to do that. Um, I'm dishing out these codes like every day. Uh, so pretty good savings there, but they've been on the channel before they have a cool product customizable product If you're familiar with their line you can drop them a line and they'll pretty much make whatever you need within reason So pretty cool there, but today We're going to be taking a look at the MG 22, which is a you know uh, a Modular 22 suppressor uh, with like 10 different configurations. Okay, so without further ado Let's go ahead and cover this little guy in the studio and then we'll hit the range and see what it sounds like First things first, comes in a little tooling case, very compact. My dealers out there, you'll love that. Uh, comes in at multiple lengths, but let's just cover the max length here. So it comes in a max length of 6.5 inches, and the baffles themselves are 0.47 inches tall. So you can kind of do the math there and figure out just how short you can get this guy. Comes in at a diameter of one inch, and it has a max weight, again, with all the baffles in place, a max weight of 7.4 ounces. Now each individual baffle, again, remember they're each 0.47 tall, well, they each weigh 0.6 ounces. So again, you can do the math and you can figure out just how long and heavy the suppressor will be. Of course, this is a tubeless design and it's constructed of 100% 17.4 heat treated stainless steel and then it has a black nitride finish on it. So when they were using the marketing term extreme duty for a 22 can, they weren't messing around. 17.4 stainless is extremely overkill for 22. This thing will definitely last generation after generation of abuse and that finishes very nicely applied inside and out. Now as far as calibers, it's rated for 22 long rifle, 22 WMR, 17 HMR, 17 WSM, 57 by 28 and 22 Hornet. And there are no minimal barrel length requirements and it is full auto rated as you would expect. Uh, the warranty is lifetime and it comes in at a retail price of $389.50. If you're a gold member on Patreon, subtract 20% from that and you have yourself a really affordable heavy use suppressor here. So let's take a close up look at the, should I say, baffle stack itself. Again, you have a blast chamber here. Okay, we'll just start from the bottom. You have half by 28 here wrench flats, okay, should it come stuck on your hose gun. Right here you have your blast chamber, okay, and there is a baffle built into it. And then you have your identification ring here with all your serialized info. And then your baffle themselves start. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine baffles, and then a, a cap lock system for a wipe should you choose to use one. We'll cover that in just a second. Uh, so. There is kind of like wrench flats built into each baffle face as well. I'll show you some tight shots here and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So let's just go ahead and just loosen it here. Broke it right there in the middle. And you do not need to, you know, manhandle these things tight. Uh, they are taper locked. So, you know, just give it a snug little turn and they will not loosen under fire. I have already shot this can. I actually filmed this review in reverse. I went to the range the other day and shot it and it performed very well, um, better than I thought it would. You know, not doubting Rex Selenium or anything, but uh, I guess this has been a while since I shot a 22 can and I wasn't expecting it to be as quiet as it was. Uh, very fun to shoot. So here's a close up of the baffle design here I'll show you. This has probably 300 rounds through it. So you can see there what that carbon looks like on the middle of the stack of the baffle. Uh, so cleaning should be simple. I don't know if throwing this in an ultrasonic cleaner is going to screw up that beautiful uh, finish on there, that black nitride. So use caution. 
With 22 cans, I feel like, you know, we tend to go a little overkill because they do get dirty. But if you stay on top of it and pretty much just knock everything down with a wire brush after every brick of 22 ammo, you should be all right without having to resort to an ultrasonic cleaner. Um, but very cool. I shot it in the full length configuration at the range and a half length. Okay, obviously I couldn't sit here and do all 10 configurations. Uh, the video would be way too long. Uh, but I felt like a happy medium would be 100% of the stack and then 50% of the stack so you could hear what it sounds like. Very, very simple to use. You literally just pick which one you want to break down to and then move your front cap down and that's it. So really easy to use, user, user friendly, uh, not much instruction needed. As far as the front cap section, you'll see here it has a wipe sandwiched in this front cap that okay that threads into the first baffle here or should i say the last baffle and i'm not quite sure it's needed okay because you'll see here in a minute that as i was shooting i didn't notice any degradation of sound levels it sounded pretty even throughout shooting all day and i edited this video in order okay from a new wipe to a completely shot out wipe and yeah, I'm just not sure if it's really needed. Um, it's cool, don't get me wrong. You don't have to use a wipe and you can replace your own wipes. Per ATF rules, you cannot store like a pile of wipes that are already punched out. So in the instruction manual that they send with the suppressor, it actually gives you the part number you need for the wipes to order on McMaster car. Get a, get a one inch punch, boom, hit it and then replace it, cut your old one in half first, throw it away. So you can replace it yourself should you want like super, super Hollywood quiet, backyard, impressing friends quiet. But again, I didn't really notice that much of a difference, so I'm not sure how much it's gonna help, but it is a cool feature to have. Speaking of numbers, uh, it is factory tested at the muzzle uh, per mil spec readings of 117 decibels on a six inch barrel Browning bulk mark with subsonic velocity ammo, okay? And on a 16 inch uh, Ruger 1022, it averaged 116 decibels with subsonic ammo. So very quiet. Uh, it did not say whether or not that was the short configuration or full. Let's just go ahead and assume that those numbers are the max you can get. And that was with the full length configuration. So I believe that covers it for the studio, guys. Um, I don't want to drag it along too far here because I really want you guys to hit that range with me and see what this thing sounds like. But I'll definitely put up some uh, cool close shots of this sucker here so you can really get a feel for the design and the quality of the baffles and the machining. It's actually really cool to manipulate in person and definitely fun to change the size on. Let's go ahead, grab some host, hit the range, see what it sounds like.
All right, everybody, little ending thoughts today. So I came out here expecting to get a little port pop, especially on the rifle when we shot it in the full uh, 10 baffle length configuration. Boy, was I wrong. Uh, I actually decided to shoot it in the full length and then remove four baffles for both hosts. Why? One, I can't do every single configuration. This video would be like two hours long. And two, I figure, you know, we have 100% and then 50%, you know, links here to judge the suppression levels and the back pressure levels. And off camera, I started to experiment, you know, because I didn't want to keep rolling with even shorter links uh, as I did here. So I'll go ahead and show you that real quick because I did decide to film it. And what I found was even with three baffles, remember, because there is a baffle built into the blast chamber half by 28 mount, three baffles and a completely shot out wipe, it still sounded great on the rifle. So for those of you out there with children that are gonna use this for like woods walk, squirrel hunting, stuff like that, I mean, really three baffles is not gonna add much overall length to your rifle. And the suppression sounded damn close to just removing four baffles. Forget using a full stack on the rifle. It's just simply not needed. Uh, on the pistol, you could tell a difference from the full length down to the four. I didn't shoot it in this length configuration, uh, but I wasn't getting any port pop out of the gun. So the back pressure levels are good. They're balanced, uh, which is what you want. Um, I only had one, one wipe as stated. So I filmed this review in order. So what you guys are gonna watch during my edit, as far as timeline, you know, uh, that's the order that I shot everything so you'll hear any performance changes that I can't hear here as I'm reviewing it when I go home and put my earbuds in I should be able to discern tiny little changes uh, so you're gonna hear that front wipe degrade over time so hopefully you paid attention maybe you can hear it maybe you can't I don't know uh, but I know as far as person tone was very low deep was not high pitched at all which is attributed to the most 22 suppressors. Um, you know, it's been a while since I shot a 22 can review. I think the last one I did was the Rugged Suppressors Mustang, if I recall. Pretty sure, I'm not missing any in there, but it's been a while. I forgot how fun it is to shoot 22. Number one, ammo's not that expensive, even though it is hard to find these days. Uh, but it's just so fun. There's no recoil, the sound's pretty much nil. It's very enjoyable, you know. When my daughter's old enough to shoot, uh, you know, when we start to teach her gun safety, obviously we're gonna start with a 22, and I'm very much looking forward to having suppressors like this around to kind of show her the differences in sound levels and be kind of cool to kind of spend a day out here removing each baffle magazine by magazine by magazine until you're unsuppressed and then they have an appreciation for that. So, um, you know, the serial numbers protected here, you know, on that cool little band that they did here towards the blast chamber, wrench flats all over it, case anything gets stuck. So all day today, I just use just hand tightness, just a little snug, nothing crazy, and everything just came loose. So I'm really trying to find something negative here. I guess if I can find one negative, it'd be the weight, you know, since the material's at hand here, uh, you know, you can feel that. It's not like a lightweight titanium suppressor or anything like that. Uh, but you do get longevity. So it's kind of a trade-off. Very, very robust feeling in your hand. Uh, definitely something that's going to outlive us generation by generation. So, yeah, I'm really trying to find a negative here. Maybe different colors. Do a raw one, like raw metal. Maybe flat dark earth. I don't know. Uh, it was really fun. I, I'm not sure if the wipe's even needed, to be honest. I mean, I've been shooting it for the last couple of magazines. It's completely shot out. As you can see, I'll show you a close up. It's, it's not adding any suppression benefits. So I, I'm, I'm really not sure if you even need the wipe. Uh, we shot it dry all day, so we didn't use any water at all to aid in suppression. So you don't need to shoot it wet at all. So I really try to find something negative in these reviews. I wouldn't say negative, but you know, improvement maybe um, in all my reviews. I'm really finding it hard here. I guess the weight would be the only thing that I can complain about. So take that for what you will. Uh, the best way to judge suppressors 
is not by watching videos like this. While my videos do give you a lot of information as far as the studio, close-up shots of the mounting options and the weight and the specifications and the colors and the price, all that stuff detailed. And then it would come out here and try to get this microphone dialed in just perfect enough so you can hear the tone of the sound. You're still not gonna hear the full spectrum of the sound until you shoot it in person. And for that reason, that's why I do events like Suppress Fest which is not out of the books yet. Stay tuned for that. But uh, Suppress Fest is an event, as you know, where you can come out and you can listen to these in person. All the companies that I film with here on YouTube, they are all invited and you guys can come out and actually shoot these in person and make up your own educated decision on your next purchase. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I don't wanna drag you along any further. Please click that like button. It does help with our organic reach and subscribe. If this is your first time, stop by because we have a lot more videos in queue. See you next time.